Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, July 18th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Taylor. Here. All present. Thank you, sir. All right, if you'll stand tonight, we'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Bill Lindsay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight in Jesus Christ's precious name, Lord. We ask you to give us guidance and the ability to do what's right for the city, Father. Lord, we ask you to protect our police officers and our fire department people. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll do pledge sign the flag in the back, please. <clears throat> the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Action on the minutes for regular meetings, uh, July 5th, 2016. Second. So moved. Mr. McLaughlin and Craybocker. <laughs> ready, sir? And you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craver? Yes. <clears throat> Pass 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on. Communications, none tonight, so we'll move on to the city manager's report. Thank Mr. you, Mayor. Mr. Good evening. What's that? Mr. Kitko. Yeah, acting. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, city manager's report tonight. Uh, we will start off with uh, B, our finance discussion. <coughs> Ms. Harris, please. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mayor, Council, and members of the public. The June financial report. And the total revenue that we took in for June was $385,044.17. And the total expenditures for June is $720,498.91. So our year-to-date on the revenue collection is $2,843,990.81. And the year-to-date expenditures is $2,327,936.69. On uh, going with the income tax, general fund month-to-date collected $77,007.59 and the half percent police income tax brought in $47,296.97. For a total month, month of June income tax of $124,304.56. Our year to date for the income tax in the general fund is $669,992.05. And the police levy is at $325,000. $199.30. Second page of my report, we are having a little um, information of profit and loss on the pool. Revenue to date for the pool is $41,722.58. And the expenditures to date is $34,368.60 for a profit for the end of June of $7,353.98. The rest of it, um, there's any questions on any of the rest of the report? Yes. We should finish, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, on the pool, is there still quite a few bills that can come in yet for chemicals and whatnot? Yes. Any idea what they might be? No. Okay. Um, July, um, Probably, I think we had a little bit extra maintenance on it and a little bit more chemicals, but um, so far it's been doing pretty good okay. on uh, income. I just know from past the chemicals really count, uh, really add up, and that's what I was wondering about. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Mayor, Mr. McLaughlin. I, I have a question on uh, hopefully we won't have too many more months that we spend a lot more than we take in. And I was looking at the checks that were written and so forth. 
And I just want everyone to know that we had some big expenses I saw of. I highlighted a few. Look at them again here. You want me here. to hit a couple of those highlights? Um, the treasurer's office, right. we paid um, OPWC, which is a semi-annual loan of $23,457. The um, OWDA loan, which is semi-annual, was $127,252. That was a very large one. Happens twice a year. We also uh, paid for some of our audit. That's thirteen thousand five hundred. I highlighted that. Um, then going into let's see, the May attorney services were higher than normal. It was ten thousand four hundred forty-one, and I know there was a lot of work on the um, uh, Kennedy Trust. Was probably most right. of that that I looked at. And then Edgebrook Overlay Project, one hundred and eighty-seven thousand nine hundred and eighty, and that is a paid in full for that project. Yeah. So those were some that I highlighted. But if there's any other questions on the checks, well, that's what I want to do is bring it to everyone's attention that that's why there's such a disparity between the two, is we did have those big payments that had to go out. Right. And I thank you. One other question I have is on the tax refunds. Do we have that many people that actually overpay that we have to pay them back like that? They I are, saw some big ones, three thousand over three thousand dollars and so forth. That's on. for um, the end of the year. They were just we were just getting caught up from April, so uh, they were a lot on that one. <coughs> we probably won't have too many after from this point on, but that was overpayments you know, based upon their tax mm -hmm. returns. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're Appreciate welcome. It. Good report. Thank Council, you. any other questions? Or this um, I was trying to find, and I was trying to know because there is an ordinance coming up about PNC. And in the past, we were talking about service charges of PNC. If you remember, we always thought how high they are. But I did not see that anything in the check register this time. You know, is there a reason? Or is this, this not, not time yet? They usually come out as a memo expense. It's not an actual check written. And this is. Your, my actual checks. Um, PNC still runs, they were running around 2000 a month when we first started. And we've eliminated a lot of the uh, services that that included and we're down to probably 600 a month. Okay. But, but there still is a lot of fees with um, the merchants and the merchants is the fees with the credit cards. We happen to have taken a lot of credit cards in for the last couple months. Mm -hmm. So those fees go up. So. We're okay. still in that $1,500 range between the credit card fees, both the bank fees. Okay. Um, we, like I said, reduced it a lot, but it still it fluctuates based upon the, the credit cards that we take. Okay. Do we still do a lot of work with security? Because I noticed we have a lot of money going. Security is our um, one of our other main. I, we have more money in security than we do PNC right now. Okay. So we and we have a little bit in uh, um, Nicola Federal. So we've used all three of the banks. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lauer. Is the audit finished? No. They're still, still going on? <clears throat> okay, thank you. They got off to a late start. They probably had one more week. <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mrs. Harris, there's some, uh, I think, some large expenditures with no explanation. Uh, there's, uh, there's one here for. Uh, South Chemical for 862. Is that for the pool or? Can you give me the check number? The check number that way I can look is, it up uh, for you. 72012. It's wastewater chemicals. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Could we get that notation put on here? Then I would have to ask it when, when we have those large amounts. What do you consider a large amount? Because I, well, I, I have to do all these manuals. Pardon? I think $800 is a lot of money, and if, if, if a citizen would ask us if they would see this, we wouldn't be able to tell them what it's for. Well, and, and absolutely, and I bring a journal just, just to make sure that I can answer any questions on them. Um, that's a routine one that we have every month, but okay. I'll go ahead and make a note to remember to okay. put down. Come on. And there was uh, $700 here somewhere. 710 uh, check number 72031 for A&L Plumbing for $710. What was that for? 72031 is the check number. 
นาดอันนี้นะเราก็ได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่าเราได้รับการรายงานว่
Uh, our department at Bethel Park are starting to work <coughs> tremendously lot more together, um, which is good because we're, we basically consider each other our sister departments because we run so much together on different uh, responses. Uh, so we, I've got quite a few people that are working both departments, which is nothing but a win-win situation for both departments. Council, Mr. Evans. Uh, how, much, how much do you think we're going to need to save for the Lucas tool? Because I know we talked about that. Quite Lucas often. tool right now is right for the, to purchase the Lucas tool, it's a little bit over $13,000 for the tool. The first year it would be under warranty. The second year after that we would incur another, uh, a little over $5,000 for a uh, annual maintenance on that, on that apparatus, but that 5000 is paid out over a four year period. All right, and this is highly important, right? Because if there's two of you guys, it just automatically does CPR. It'll automa it'll, once it's put on the patient, it will continue CPR and it can, the patient can be moved, transported up or downstairs, um, in the back of the medic, whatever, without having to um, take the tool off. It'll continually do CPR. There's statistic, yeah, stats out there right now of showing several saves in our area, in the, this, the Miami Valley of departments that already have the Lucas tools that have had several saves with them because it does perfect CPR. And the biggest thing for us is that is for the patient, but the second also too, the safety for the, for the firefighter and paramedics because if we, right now we don't have one, so if we're going to Grandview Hospital with a cardiac patient, there's somebody standing up in the back of that medic the whole way doing CPR. So. I think it's a good thing. I know we've talked about it for a year and a half now. I think it's fantastic. It's, we're trying. I mean, it, I was hoping that we would get the large grant that we didn't, um, but that's all right. We'll get there. Yeah, we're right now. We're looking. We've, we've got a little bit over over five over four thousand dollars, almost five thousand dollars in the fund right now. Fantastic. Thank you, Council, Mr. Kerbacher. Um, <laughs> There was a house that was destroyed by fire here, I don't know if it was last. Bayberry. And it was from about gas. Is no. that one? No, no. That wasn't? It was electrical. That was electrical. Okay, could that have been prevented? I can't respond to that, sir. Okay. Everything could be. Any other questions, Council? Chief Trustee, thank you for the report. Uh, make sure you pass on to the crew that we thank them for all their hard work and the good job they're doing. Amen. And I'd just like to add, uh, I'm th I'd like to thank the fire department for taking over the hydrant flushing. This is the second year. Oh, it puts yeah. their crews hands on. I only have two people in my water department, so um, this allows them to go keep working on their duties. So thanks again, <laughs> Chief. Uh, moving on uh, to the police yeah. discussion, uh, Sergeant Underwood. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Council, Mayor, audience. For our monthly reports, juvenile deputies took 23 reports. Reports by Clark County deputy was 44. Uh, 67 reports for the city. Miles Patrol, 2,499. Miscellaneous calls, 150. And follow up investigations, there were none. Your traffic information. Traffic stops 30, citations issued 18, OVI arrest 1, driving under suspension 7, parking citations 1, abandoned vehicle tows 1. Um, we had no injury accidents that our deputies took care of. Uh, we did have an injury accident. Under arrest information, from arrest we had 4 adults uh, with 6 charges, and we had 1 juvenile with 1 charge. That was entertaining. And that juvenile decided to walk behind one of our patrol cars and uh, moon the deputy. So, uh, what do you do that? We had warrant arrest, we had 12, and warrants filed, we had one. Uh, I just want to make a comment about that. You see a lot of things on the media or on TV about people doing silly things like that. Reality, uh, we take offense to that, and other people around do. So that's why the juvenile was charged. Under special interest, assault we had one, breaking and entering the zero, that's good. F's three, vandalism none, that's another good one. 911 hang ups, we had 16, that's probably one of our odds. Phone harassment, we had one. Domestic violence with assault, there was one. Domestic violence verbal, we had none. Lockouts 
two, police officer calls one, alarm we had 10, and assist we had 47. And I'd like to announce that Deputy Cruz is happy to be back to work. She's on bike patrol with Deputy Allender, and they're making their rounds. Please, please feel free to stop them, talk about crime in your neighborhood, and I want to add or anything else you, you may want to discuss with you. And I want you to remember it's summertime. The parole deputies are playing, paying close attention to the full area, keeping and watching their children, and making sure they're safe. The deputies are also doing extra patrols in the city parks and patrolling the bike path. And since we have the bike patrol, they have been out on the bike path uh, pretty regularly. And remember, if you observe something unusual or think something looks wrong, please report it. If you have any information about criminal activity, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office, 937-328-2560. And that concludes the report. If you have any questions, I'll try to Counsel, any questions? Mr. McIntyre. <clears throat> Sergeant, um, what can I say? It's not an easy time to be a law enforcement officer. It never has been, but particularly in these past few weeks, it's become pretty obvious. So I want to thank everything you and your deputies do. Um, I think the two, two of the scariest moments for an officer is obviously a domestic situation where you're going into somebody's house and also when you pull somebody over because you don't know what their intentions are, you don't know them, they don't know you. One of the things I wanted to ask, if you're a concealed and carry permit holder and you have a weapon on you and you're pulled over, what's a proper way to inform the officer that you have a weapon on your person? I mean, obviously you don't lean out the window and yell, I got a gun, but, but what, would be, what would be the best way to handle that so that everybody feels okay in that situation? Well, on most traffic stops, uh, we prefer to see your hands and the best place put your hands is on the steering wheel where we can't see them. We get a little suspicious and actually start looking when you're moving around, uh, trying to find a, maybe an ID or your insurance card. We ask that you stay still uh, and let the officer talk to you. He'll explain uh, what he would like from you. Uh, in the case of concealed carry, um, we'd like you to keep your hands on the steering wheel and the law requires you to announce that you are concealed carry and that you have a weapon with you. Uh, and that's the proper way to do that. And at that point in time, the officer will have a couple questions for you. Um, if without the concealed carry, uh, the officer will come up and not all the time, the officer will be on the driver's side. He may decide because of traffic or whatever else might be related, he does a passenger side approach. Uh, and that's just for officer safety too. So um, basically, if, if you follow his directions, you should be on your way pretty soon. And I, and I found out talking to most of our guys, if, if you're honest and upfront with them and, and treat them civil, you'll get the same respect in return and you'll leave within a few minutes and sometimes even without a citation. Thank you. Counsel, Mr. McGann. Do we have any idea how many hours are spent with the bicycles now, actually on patrol? I haven't kept track of it. I'm going to say uh, between the two certified people we have, uh, a couple hours a shift. And not only are, are they using the bicycles, and what filters into this is uh, there might be a day where it's, it's extremely rainy or extremely hot and they're out on foot too. We've been doing business checks, uh, going inside and, and talking to the, the owners and, and offering yourself to the public in your downtown. I've noticed, you know, the new cruiser going around with a bicycle on the back of it quite often and sometimes without it. But I was just wondering, you know, how much it's actually, the bicycles are actually being used, so that's good. I'll uh, take a look at it for next month, but actually they're being used a lot. Good. That's good time. to hear. Yeah. And you, you, you may not see them all the time. They might be in the bike path, or they might be looking for a subject, uh, kind of the eyes for the car sometimes. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Council, any other questions? <clears throat> Thanks, Sergeant. Appreciate the report. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, under informational items, still been on here for some time. They still have pre-smoke detectors, as the Chief had said.
includes installation, no age restrictions. Uh, you can contact the Fire and EMS Department at 845-8401 uh, or the city offices and we can uh, forward them on down. Uh, in your packet is the New Carlisle Health Stats. They're attached. Uh, upcoming, uh, Mr. Bridge will probably be discussing uh, some waste management things that might be coming down the pike. Uh, Kennedy Trust update, that has been pretty busy. Twin Creeks parcel update, and then the health levy renewal information, which I'm kind of currently working on for him while he's gone. Great. And uh, with that, I don't have any additional that was supposed to be added, so that is the manager's report for tonight. Any questions for the acting city manager, council? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Lowry. How behind Security National Bank where the house sits for the last two to three months they've had the stakes up with the wood ground. And I thought they was getting ready to build something in there and nothing's going on. Do you have any idea what it is? That is supposed to be a privacy fence and from what I understand he was wanting to do some building work before he put the privacy fence up. Okay. That's the last I heard and I, I can check into it. And okay. What? Thank you, Mr. Kitko. All right, moving on to, let's see, some report comments from members of the public. Anybody has any comments or questions? Ma'am? Nancy Lanovich, 5053. I just wanted to say um, I'm terrified for our police department with all the stuff they've got going on. And, I have run into the people on bicycles. They greet me with a great big smile, so I've been, had some nice conversations with them. I wanted to pass that along. And here recently, uh, I don't know if I'd had the pleasure, but I did. Uh, I was taken to Miami Valley Hospital in the uh, squad, and uh, from what they tell me, because I was out, they did a wonderful job and they responded quickly. So I just wanted to pass that along. Thank, Thank you, you Nancy. Love to hear. Everything doing? You're doing okay, though. Yeah, good. Now. <laughs> good, good. Glad to hear. Any other comments from the public? All right. We'll move on to committee reports. None tonight. Resolutions, Mr. Collier. Resolution 16-05R: Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight. A resolution in support of the City of Dallas, Texas Police Department, Dallas Area. Rapid Transit Police Department and law enforcement officers nationwide. Mr. Mayor, Mr. McLaughlin. I move that we would accept resolution 16-05R as written. Second. <coughs> Let me read this before or after? Does it you can read it? Read it before we vote on it. Read it before we vote? Okay. I'll read this. this is resolution 16-05R. Resolution in support of the City of Dallas, Texas Police Department, Dallas Area Rapid Transit Police Department, and law enforcement officers nationwide. <clears throat> Whereas the men and women of the law enforcement agencies nationwide are dedicating and protecting and serving their communities with honor, dedicated, dedication and integri integrity, and whereas those called upon protect, protect and serve selflessly, sacrifice and put their lives on the line daily to protect us and our property, despite the emotional stress upon themselves, their families, so that the communities remain safe and secure. And whereas the city of New Carlisle grieves with the others around the country in the, in the wake of the, in the wake of the, I'm sorry, represent, reprehensible, thank you, reprehensible, reprehensible shooting in Dallas, Texas, especially the law enforcement community, which lost five officers in the line of duty, and whereas no attack on law enforcement can ever be tolerated, and whereas the City Council of New Carolina, Ohio stand with, the, stand with and convey our deepest condolences to the victims, their families, and friends, as well as the Dallas community, and whereas New, the City of New Carlisle Council members and honors sacrifice and honors the sacrifices and all enforcement officers who have lost their lives protecting the communities they sworn to uphold. Therefore, now therefore be resolved that the city of New Carlisle does resolve that declare the follows. The city council of New Carlisle, Ohio honors, supports, stands united with the Dallas Police Department, 
Dallas Area Rapid Transit Police Department and law and law office law enforcement officers nationwide who serve and protect our communities. Now we could add another to that. Yeah, Unfortunately. So you would like to call for the vote, sir. Mm -hmm. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. And I want to thank Councilman Bill Lindsay for putting this together with the city manager. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Absolutely. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving on to ordinances, whenever you're ready. Just for the sake of the audience, all the ordinances this evening are to be enacted upon. Once I finally find out where I buried this that I just had. Ordinance 16-28, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of natural gas. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Will we adopt ordinance 16 28? Second. And as an explanation of this ordinance, uh, annually or um, as uh, the city manager and the company agree upon, they will lock you in on a rate, and which is 0.489 cents per um, cubic foot. Yeah. Something cubic foot. CCF. CCF. Cubic yeah. centimeter. Yeah. Anyway, the standard for measuring CCF. gas in the industry. <laughs> um, and with that being said, typically municipalities really have a, a lower rate than um, the norm because of the bulk amount of uh, natural gas that we use. Council, any questions? Mr. Collier, when you're ready, please. <clears throat> Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. I almost couldn't get that out. Get cut me. <laughs> Tickle there. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. I know it's already passed, so it doesn't make a difference. But I've noticed in this email to Randy from uh, Tammy Wolf from the Direct Energy to talk about. It really isn't a contract. It's not a written contract. It's not it's just. What's that? It's not, it's not really a written contract. As, right. as what right. we were saying. There's no early term. There's no really nothing. It's kind of just a handshake type agreement. I just want people to know that. The emails. Yeah. yeah. Ordinance 16-29, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with the Board of Clark County Commissioners. Council. Mr. Mayor, I move we accept Ordinance 16-29 as written. Second. Is that you, Mr. Lindsay? Yes. <clears throat> and as an explanation of this ordinance, four years we've uh, used the uh, Clark County uh, maintenance garage for or some side work if we need, but mainly it's for the sheriff's deputies cruisers when we have any kind of work done. And then they just have an agreement to give us a set rate of $37.10 per hour for any services we have. That's any questions? I have one. Uh, I saw a cruiser up there at Jenkins sitting outside. Is that from the county then? Uh, that is ours. That is a, um, that one is a, Top engine um, rebuild on um, <clears throat> I'm drawing a blank tonight. <laughs> I like have no explanations for anything. I mean, <laughs> it, one of our cruisers up ran and uh, we're getting uh, repaired. One of the older Dodges? Yeah, actually, I think it's. Um, There's a Crown Vic. Yeah, it's the Crown Vic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Mr. Reynolds. How often do we service those vehicles? 
uh, oil changes are based on manufacture, three to 5,000 oils, and then we just follow their recommendation. All right, because this weekend we went riding and one of the brakes, like when they're hitting the brakes, you'd hear the squeaking of the brakes. And I mean, I'm not a mechanic and I don't profess to be one, but typically when the brakes are squeaking, they're probably going bad. Were, were you in one of the- uh, I was the, in a char charger. Um, it wasn't in the new, by the way, it was not in the new vehicle. Let me, let me put that out there. It was in the old charger. Uh, it, it could be various reasons. Usually if they get that, we'll call, uh, just because they go so slow and drag the brakes, they'll become glazed is the main reason they're squeaking. Um, the second reason is the warning tab that's on the inside brake pad could be starting to touch the rotor and it's a warning to know that the pads are getting low and they'll need change. Yeah. Again, I said I don't profess to be a mechanic, so I ask you that <laughs> question. Mr. Lindsay? To follow up on Mr. Reynolds' question, I was riding in that car also and it sounded to me like it was metal to metal. And I'm not a mechanic, but I've changed one or two brakes in my life. And when we first heard it, there was an old truck behind us. And I told the deputy, I says, that truck behind us needs a brake job. <laughs> and later on, we went around a curve and he tapped his brakes and I said, no, I think it's his cruiser that needs a brake job. And he just, he never said anything. So I don't know if you wasn't allowed to say anything about that to me or not, but I heard it myself. I think it needs to be checked out, whether it's glazed or not, it needs to, something needs to be done with it. Oh no, we'll definitely check it out if it's that or um, yeah. usually you get grinding once you hear, once you get metal to metal, but no, yeah. we'll definitely check into it. And, and the shocks on that same cruiser needs to be checked too, I think. Because <laughs> when you go around a curve, it just kind of wobbles, you know. <laughs> Sorry, John, where did you have something to say real quick? Yes, I'd like to say uh, Howie, Mr. Kitko, and Dave Coleman do excellent jobs on our patrol cars. Uh, anytime you can keep a car 16 years, they're doing something right. Uh, it is our responsibility to report to them any maintenance issues we have. We have some new people out that, and, and maybe they're not aware of that's the problem. But I'll find out tomorrow if, if, yeah, if we'll they're here it. metal to metal that they need to get a hold of uh, Dave or Mr. Kitko. Uh, but I, I just want to let you know they, they've done a great job. Uh, they're getting the other car back together, the one we had a small fire in, and Mr. Coleman not only is putting a new uh, gun rack in, that was the issue that started the fire. Uh, after it was detailed, it looked great, uh, but he's going to do uh, a final detail on it and get it cleaned up. So I, what I'm trying to say is they're doing a really good job. In fact, it's a great job. But they can't fix something that we don't tell them about. That's right. That's right. Mr. Lowry. Yeah. Question shocks are a luxury, too. <laughs> Pardon me? Shock, shocks can be a luxury at some time. <laughs> we'll have a conversation later. <laughs> okay. okay, have an ordinance that you can do work in their garage at $37.10 per hour. Okay? But I just heard you say there's a cruiser at Jenkins, which I know, I think labor right now for mechanics is up around $75 an hour. So why is it over there rather than here where we get it done very simply? That's uh, some of that work they, they won't get into. They can't do it? We'll, okay. we'll, yeah, we'll bog their shop down with something that heavy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But no, great question. I don't understand that. I understand. No. Thank you. No, I don't need Okay. All right, any other questions? When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Passes seven to zero. Ordinance 16 30, public <coughs> hearing and action tonight. An ordinance, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of propane gas. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I may have accept ordinance 16 30. A second. Um, I know the explanation of this ordinance, um, Randy had uh, contacted them, and from what I understand, they're going to give us the same rate as last year and not increase it. Mr. Kitko, do, do they use uh, they use propane out at the cemetery? Correct? They're the only ones, yes. Uh, did, did we talk in the past about we're going to try and eliminate that somehow? I thought I did, and I got a hold of a veteran. I did a full, complete uh, construction drawing form and plans. 
they give me back an estimate of over twenty thousand dollars to put the main down. They wouldn't put it; we had to pay for it. Right. So I started looking at various businesses <laughs> down past and other places, and it just got. That was just to the cemetery house, mm -hmm. and to try and share costs to get it farther it was just not feasible okay. at this time. And Mr. Mack. Oh. Go ahead. Mr. Lindsay, thank you. Uh, two questions for you, Mr. Kiko. Uh, one, we also use it at the garage, also the uh, propane, correct? Yeah, it's only, yeah, only at the cemetery, the two, the house and the garage at the cemetery. Oh, the garage at the cemetery, okay. And the second question, do you know if, um, if Mr. Bridge contacted anybody else to see if they had a lower price with, gas pr with the oil prices down? Could we not beat this? If, I'm, I'm, un I'm unaware down? of that. Okay. No. Now my question is, uh, <clears throat> aren't we possibly looking into shutting down the cemetery office building? Uh, the, we're possibly We've discussed looking at the, it a bit. Yeah, the so house maybe, but the garage will stay. Yeah, so there's no point in trying to pay twenty thousand dollars to get some lines out there if we're not before shutting down the building, you know, in a few years, whatnot. So. Yeah, and I had those estimates probably like five, about four or five months ago before we did Yeah, so sounds good to me. Okay. Council, any other questions? Mr. Collier, when you're ready, please. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Ordinance 16-31, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance to declare PNC Bank a depository for the city of New Carlisle's funds. Mr. Mayor, I move we accept ordinance 16-31 as written, please. Second. And I will uh, forward this on to Ms. Harris for the explanation. Um, we have an agreement with PNC when they uh, requested to be one of our depositories. So it's a housekeeping, um, it's up for renewal, it's a five year term. They're pledging their assets to protect our funds. Council, any questions? <coughs> Mr. Collier, when you're ready, please. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybarber? <coughs> no. No. You say no. And no. 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 Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. I thought he said uh, no. I know. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Passes six to one. <laughs> Moving on to other business, whenever you're ready, Gene. Other business uh, for the city is there'll be movie night at Smith Park on Saturday, July the 30th. Uh, it's presented by National Trails Park and Recreation. The movie is inside out, and that movie will begin at dark. Did you say they're playing the movie inside or outside? Outside. <laughs> that was a joke. Outside, inside out? The movie is inside out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, though. Thank you. you bring, bring lots of bug spray, would you say? Right. Only if it's on the outside. On the stage. National Night Out will be Tuesday, August the 2nd, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Church of the Brethren. The 6th Annual Community Safety Day and Meet the Faces Behind the Badges will be Thursday, August the 11th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Tecumseh High School, and it's presented by Family and Youth youth initiatives and the farmers market is uh, Saturday every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I asked a question on that as far as meet the badges who all is involved in that this time around mm -hmm. over to come so do we know well our I mean just our local or are we talking about county or county yeah. countywide yeah, I know they've contacted all the fire, uh, fire departments in the area Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. And I'm sure our local uh, officers are highly controlled. Thank you. Okay. Council, any other questions, <coughs> comments about this evening? I have a question. Other comments? Mr. Lindsay. Is there any way that council or the city can, can uh, 
promote, help promote some of these things we have going on here in the city to kind of get the word out or not? Maybe something on the website for them? Almost. The website or? I would say I've always seen on the website. Uh, most of it comes from the news media usually of these kind of things. I guess we don't have billboards like on our firehouse or out in front of our um, city building. So mainly a social media and the news media. But it ends up on our website. Okay. Does, on that same note, Mr. Lindsay, does, when Kim was doing the, uh, what was it, like a annually or quarterly flyer that she did for the city, remember? Uh, oh, and, okay. Yeah, we did the annual, the annual flyer. flyer. Do, you, do we still do that? That was, uh, been a couple years, that was one of the things cut. Because. Because. <coughs> okay, thank you. Mr. What is the quarter to the newsletter? Sometimes on the water, on your water bill, they'll be like, hey, here's a reminder about something. Is, is this the type of thing, the, uh, the, the behind the badges, is that the type of thing we would put on that? Yeah, um, something like that could work. We're limited on the actual characters. I think we get like 20 or 24 characters sure. on, on certain lines. So if we could fit it in, it's, if something else wasn't in there prior to this being known to the uh, utility clerk, but I can check and see. Water bills go out. Well, they'll go out at the end of the month, and people will probably get them on the first or the second. So it might be. And then this last one was we had hydrant flushing and something else on there. So it probably it may not work. It probably will not work because they'll probably get it the day of. Sure. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Glockman. I'm sure our local newspaper will also be running some things about that. Are they not? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Oh, Lindsay. Uh, I just want to thank New Carlisle News because they have been running ads for the uh, National Night Out for us. They are running them every week this uh, month. Also, uh, uh, Scott Griffith up at Lee's has got it on his billboard out front, his electric uh, sign. I also want to thank him, you know, for, uh, for doing that for us too. Thanks, sir. I apologize. I missed this under my service discussion, but I want to let you guys know you've probably driven Main Street. We had to get some of those humps taken out of Main Street, so we built and did some repairs uh, for those. That was just less than about a day project uh, for the crews. And two, the Willowick thing, we got all the materials, and just when we were going to have the person do the work, uh, his machinery broke down. Well, from what I understand, his, it's back up and running because anybody else has to get special permits to get excavators in there large enough. Um, these concrete lids that we found down there are 7,000 pounds a piece. So just no normal excavator is going to lift these. So they were going to permit us and the company would charge us all this, these fees to get their equipment in there. So I have a local person who obviously has done a lot of work for us. Uh, we're working with him around his schedule to get his equipment up and then he's going to do it for us. So um, we're hoping, it was supposed to be last week, had some internal stuff uh, not work out, but we're going to try to get it this week. Thank you. Mr. Could you also had a question real quick. Can you go over while we're here on camera what the purpose and reasoning is behind hydrant flushing? Uh, mainly our hydrant flushing, because I'm sure our water is really clean. We, we remove iron in our treatment process. So basically, mainly is dead ends where water gets stagnant that people really don't use. We'll flush that out. Uh, sediment that builds in the pipes, whether it could be scaling, um, any numerous thing uh, build up. It settles. Hydrant's really cleaning up the barrel of the hydrant, operation of the hydrant, greasing it. Uh, for years, these hydrants really weren't touched unless there was a fire by it. So annually now, uh, whether it's a fire department or water department, we open them and close them all, caps, grease them, uh, and try and get the ones that don't work in and replace or repaired. But yeah, it's mainly for really fire protection services and then uh, just flushing some water that may not get used as fast as others. So is that why when our water's flush, I mean, in, at least in my area, I know some of the water doesn't get like a really brownish color like you see in some other communities, so. Right, for instance, like Clark County, when they do it, they don't do iron removal. They pump from the well, chlorinate, and ship it out to the customer. We do iron removal, uh, softening, and everything. So really our water's, uh, there's not much iron to come out. Okay. First couple of years, we used to give a bunch of those bottles of iron out. out. We haven't given one out in almost two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been a, it's been a good thing. What's a fire hydrant cost roughly? Uh, Eighteen to twenty two hundred dollars. Wow. That's just the material. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, yeah, Mr. Craig? I'm uh, talking about fire hydrants. At one point, I don't know if it was grout or somebody was painting fire hydrants different colors because of different things. Remember that? Chief? What 
A lot of times, the, just the bonnet of the fire hydrant would paint a certain color. There's a chart, uh, it's a standard chart that you use through the fire service. A certain color bonnet will tell that uh, engine operator how many ga gallons that you can expect to get out of that hydrant per minute. Um, just like if it's if it's a black bonnet, we know that's a dead hydrant. Uh, but the different colors are coincides with the gallons that we'll get out of that hydrant per oh, minute. Cool. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Council? <clears throat> I just had one comment. Um, <clears throat> Want to thank for the excellent cleanup of Hensley Park. Looks 150 percent better than what it did. That was good. That right on Main Street. That's a something we need to keep up on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, there's no other questions. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. We are, by the way. We are.